thanks for coming um, to uh, my little start of this deduction. Uh, it's a talk about five papers, <laughs> four of which still have to be written. <laughs> uh, one of which has been submitted, but uh, it hasn't yet been discussed because it didn't fit on the agenda. So we, we were able to hit the last uh, meeting, but alas. So it's supposed to be discussed this meeting. So you guys are the first to see it, and it's already R1. Um, I want a lot of heckling today because this is sort of like a, a live fire test for this. If we come up with anything that's hugely wrong, we want to fix it. So um, this is going to be a talk with a lot of audience participation because mostly I'm going to be asking, what do you think that means? And until somebody comes up with an answer, we're not going forward. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thank you all for coming. Oh, you're here. I have to talk to you about Kolmogorov machines afterwards. Um, all right. <laughs> um, right. All right. So um, without further ado, uh, this is the people who wrote the paper, um, and. Um, I don't know why I listed us in that order. I know why I'm last. Um, but it's, it's there if you want to look at it. Um, and it contains a lot less than is in this talk because we wanted to omit anything that could possibly be controversial and I think we still failed. So <laughs> um, here goes. Uh, so yes, this is a story about how we figured out how to solve every problem in C++ that we have today. <laughs> we, being those four people. The, we being those four people, yes, exactly. <laughs> I, you know, like over promise, under deliver. That's kind of <laughs> 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 All right, so this is how this began. Uh, um, so me and Ben were talking in the hallway of CVPCon last year, and he was like, you know what? I register a lot of callbacks, and they tend to like return state, but I never know if it's an R value or an L value, and that's a pain. Um, because lambdas, you can't really know, right? So this is what Ben's problem looked like, approximately, because of course you use std vectors for callbacks. Um, so let's say you have a std vector of callbacks for some reason, um, and <laughs> you, um, oh, oops. Sorry, wrong button. All right, you have a vector of callbacks, and you put your value carrying lambda into the callback. Uh, and then you don't know which one of the possibilities you're going to be called with. Either you're going to be called with, you know, like, you'll be called many times. I will get you by reference and call you, and you should return me by copy. Uh, so, sorry, to me by copy. Uh, or if the callback processor knows that it's going to destroy the callback right after, such as you know popping it back from the vector, they can literally call you as an R value and you return by move and you get optimal performance. The problem is you don't know which one ahead of time. Sometimes, yes. I think you meant with the closing bracket for the move a bit later. Yeah. Uh, so boss. Yes, that, that's, a, that's a good one. But the thing is, this should do the right thing because back is overloaded on our value. But then callback refers to something that otherwise the move does. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. It'll just get destroyed. Yes? I don't think the vector of the vector has back in the vector. That's a bug. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it should have. And, and if, this talk, if this paper is accepted, it will. Um, because you're just going to get, oh, oh, wait, sorry. Oh, 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 so the, the, uh, the heckle was <laughs> <laughs> that vector doesn't have an R value qualified back. And I said that's a bug. And uh, yes? If you want the R value qualified, every accessor in the standard library. That you need this paper, that's it. Because <laughs> it would be incredibly fussy and you would not get consensus easily. Yes, I, I understand. So this is what we wanted to solve. Yes? Uh, why would there be consensus easily? Because it, the, the size of the edit you're talking about is so fussy. Fussy as in? Fussy as in, 
you know, you know, we already have cons for non-cons to qualify level of attendance, but if you double those again, Okay. Just wait for it. Yeah. So, so, so to to repeat, Jesus, I mean, I'm going to have a lot of problems <laughs> repeating all of this. Um, so, Ellis, there is saying that it would be very difficult to achieve consensus on every uh, accessor in the library getting all the ref and uh, const ref qualifiers because the size of the edit is too big, and that's kind of our point, actually. Um, we don't want that. No, no sane person wants to write that. It's not just the size of the edit, but looking at software like that, we do not want to be encouraging software to be so complicated. We really need what you're about to tell us. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. Okay, okay. So um, we we we're we're already getting uh, to uh, this. Today's forecast. Um, is uh, lovely with a chance of showers because unfortunately in C++ we can't avoid them. Um, I, I caught you, Michael. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, because if you consider accessors, um, you have to do what was already intuited. Um, you have to have one that's ref qualified and then you need another one that's const ref qualified, and another one that's ref ref qualified, and another one that's const ref ref qualified. And actually, I have a use case for a std optional that's ref, uh, that's volatile qualified, because you can overlay it on a register that you maybe have. Uh, <laughs> um, so that's, <laughs> yes. Uh, Oh, yeah, but oh. it happens. Yeah. Yes, do you want to? It happened to me. I can explain later. All right. Sorry. Or you could explain now. <laughs> uh, well, it, you could get yourself stuck in a place like a ternary expression where the degrees type is const, and it's const ref ref. And if you only have the non-const ref ref, you'll end up creating a temporary that you weren't expecting, and it might have an interlocution, and then it, and then it will show up in a profiler, mm -hmm. which is what happened to me. Uh, so what happened to me was something else, but I'll repeat. So, um, Mark. Mark, yeah, thank you. So to Mark, it happened that he had a ternary that produced an expression of the const ref ref type. Uh, and because const ref ref couldn't bind to a temporary, he, well, sorry, to, to a parameter, he ended up producing a temporary which showed up in a profile trace. So what happened to me was that I do a whole lot of forwarding references. Um, and when you start doing that, const ref ref shows up all the time. And when you don't have conversions and you're trying to spin things away, you end up not having the overload for stupid reasons. Um, so you sfine when you shouldn't because it should just work. So that, that's when it happened to me. So it, it happens a lot in various contexts and turns out you really want the const ref ref qualified methods. Um, that's just, yeah. Um, so yes, this is the accessor of std optional or any other optional realistically. Um, so we, we want to do better, right? Uh, and the problem is really this, right? Um, because, you know, uh, the sun does not shine and when it's too wet to play, you have to stay in the house all that cold, cold, wet day. Uh, and, and we all know that that is, you know, you're too sad to code, like that's a problem. <laughs> uh, so... With free functions, we already know how to solve this, right? Um, we, we have a friend function, and unfortunately, because of bad reasons, uh, we need to still, you know, uh, do, we need to spin it away if it's not the right type because we want to constrain it. But that's really it. Um, it looks kind of like what you would want to write, like, and the, the important thing is this widget that correctly forwards the ref qualifier is already written for you. It's called std forward. You don't need to painstakingly and error pronely slightly modify every one of the four things you copied. <laughs> um, 
You have the widget, use it, it composes nicely, done. We don't have to prove that all of the weird forwards are correct here. It's just correct. And um, shout out to Vittorio for his you have to say it three times. We're still not dry, but we're better, okay? <laughs> it's better. Um, the, yeah, uh, so d don't, please don't worry about the lack of spine here, because there should be, but it doesn't fit on slides, and it's not what the talk is about. Um, so why can't we do this with methods? Uh, and, uh, yes? Because we can't match star this with a template parameter. Yes! <laughs> yes! Uh, exactly. We're, we're out of luck, right? We, we can write the previous free friend function, because, yeah, and we can forward to it, but still, this is kind of error prone. And you have to do the identical thing for the star operator of optional. And uh, if you have a vector, you have, you know, like you have front, you have back, you have brackets, and you have at. And we can probably think of a few others like data, uh, but that one's real weird. <laughs> uh, so. I really don't even. Um, so here's the thing. I'm just going to tell you the feature. That, that's it. This is the entire talk. That's the entire talk. That's the talk. What does this mean? This is a member function? Yes, this is a member function. And we use the logical with this. Yes. Um, so this is a keyword, right? So this code does, cannot exist this, at this moment. Um, it's a template method. Uh, self is a freeform identifier, but why not stick with a convention? Uh, in fact, you don't have to have it there. Yes, but Matt. Interesting, you have have this. I mean, it seems unambiguous to use the this keyword the other side of the site. I don't know why I said okay, I uh, th We tried that. It turns out you really need self sometimes. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I think it's obvious to everyone what this means. Like, I didn't even have to teach you. Like, it's obvious. <laughs> um, like, that's, that's the proposal. We can go home. Bye. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, of course, when you're writing a proposal, you are a fool if you do not consider the ramifications. Um, and it turns out that most of the time the ramifications are really annoying, but in this case, you, we ended up solving a whole bunch of problems. Yes, Michael? Does this automatically constrain on the type of views because of the this? Uh, no, but it's only visible for you. So, yes, well, Matt. All right, all right. Yes? Uh, what does this mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this means exactly like the previous, uh, this friend function, except it's callable with the method syntax. It means exactly the same thing. Yes? Uh, that was there. Can you show me how you're calling this, and then I'll have an easier time understanding what we think we've done. Um, I can actually do one better. Um, Uh, or I will tell you exactly which functions it's allowed to generate. I, I just want to know yeah. how to call it. Because oh. But do I have to pass this? Do I have to call? Oh, no, you just call it like, you, you call it option, like your x dot value. That's it. So it's a function that has no argument because this is implicit. Yes. That's what I was trying to. Yes, do. yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You call it like a normal method. Yeah. You don't have to pass self god. Like, yes. Yeah, uh, Matt. we may be introducing a whole bunch of template instantiations and duplicate, which are essentially duplicate code, which might have, you know, some... Already the same problem with the free function. I mean... Yeah, yeah. But, but we'd be introducing it. Well, then that don't do it. Like, if yeah. that's a problem for you, don't do it. Yes? So we try to do this, like, like in math. So when, where you have self as first parameter for all set set of given data, for all grades, 
things that work, it begins to spray the back. For example, the tape of it, all of this shit will make a reference and make a mix of the reference. Mm -hmm. So the two phases. Basically, yeah. Um, except this is still a member of this class, right? It, it's not like in Rust where basically methods are kind of weirdish type classes and like, no, we're not, we're not doing that. We're just doing, this is a template method. It is templated on the explicit this parameter, which is filled in the same way the implicit this is filled today, except we have an extra name for it. That's it. Yes, Matt? Random question. It's yeah. Do you not need, if you don't have the ampersand ampersand, then yes. are you taking the this by value? Oh, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> yes? We'll get to that, <laughs> but the answer is yes. Um, it is necessary to make self visible inside the body for certain things. Um, but you can see, um, uh, you, uh, we can call has value here uh, without, you know, uh, the self, whatever. Yes, I was there. Yeah, I was just wondering in my head through about a dozen different variations of syntax to see if I can simplify this, and I think I can see why you need every single piece of text you have on the screen. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Ellis there approves. Yes, now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Phil. So will the native be ever got the uh, uniform tooling syntax? We'll get to that. <laughs> All right. People are, people have very good intuitions, but we'll solve more than that. All right, so um, I want to tell you the principles that we used in order to come to this uh, so that you can just outright discard so many possibilities of what could go wrong. So we decided we will not change function lookup rules. They're already too complicated. We will not change lookup rules. Um, we will not change template argument deduction rules at all. Um, we're just going to take this as a proper parameter and then all the, all the usual rules apply. Um, we will not change the meaning of this inside the function body. That was right off the table. Um, we will not change not having to name parameters. Therefore, if you don't need the identifier self, you don't write the identifier self. In fact, you can write whatever you like or nothing at all. Um, and we will not change, uh, uh, parameter typing is slightly a bad name for that, but basically we, we won't change any parameter syntaxy things. Um, right. Yeah. You, you mean the call side? Yes. Okay. Also that. Um, well, so, Uh, yes, this is something else. Uh, but you don't pass parameters at the call side, you pass arguments. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we will not change anything about how you interpret the way you write the type. So when, when you see something self, self behaves the same way as all the other parameters do. There's no special cases. Mind you, parameters, not arguments, right? So. The, the point is, when you see, like, int self, <coughs> self is an int. It's not like an int ref or something weird of some other kind. No, it's like, it's an int, even though it's kind of difficult to get there. But, uh, <laughs> um, but just to be absolutely concrete. Yes. With the parameters, uh, as described in the previous slide, effectively, self is a reference version or a usage, the derived version version of this. They are aliasing each other. They're the yes, the yes. Types. This, this yes. Not quite. Okay. It's either an L value reference or it's an R value but not a reference. Yes. Okay. But the point is it has the value category you would expect. Yeah, you never did use an R value reference, you just did use the value type. Oh. But, or an L value reference. Yeah. So, so yes, the uh, is there said that it's either an L value or it's an, or it's what, not a reference. Yeah. So the, 
the point is really that when you see u ref ref self, that's a, sorry, bad example. I w yes, Lisa. Because what Alistair said applies to you, doesn't it? Yeah, sorry, that's why I was. Yeah. Self yeah. is going to be a reference either Self way. is whatever. Yeah, self is whatever it would normally deduce to. Like, you, self is a reference. John, you're not holding your hand up, right? Okay. All right, so these were our principles. Um, and I think I need to show what this actually means uh, because uh, th this is the, the previous slide, basically. Uh, and what I want to show now is to give you some confidence in what this is getting to, um, which functions this template can result in. Because templates, after all, only generate concrete functions in the end, right? So let's figure that out. Um, in fact, it should result in this thing. Um, which, I mean, you see this, right? What does this actually mean? Oh, no, no not, 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 not what self means. What, what the, that's the yeah, that's the normal method. Yeah, that's exactly this. It is exactly the same thing. You can't write both. The compiler will tell you that, it, I, like, you wrote two, me two methods that are the same. Like, I, don't do that. Yes. No, this one's not a template. No, 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 it's a, no, no, but right, but the, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes, Matt? Is there some way to write with this syntax the same thing that you get from a normal, um, something without any ref qualifiers? We'll get there. Okay. Yes, I was there. If we do stuff with you, is that stuff going to be type dependent or is it going to know that it has to be this optional, therefore there's no real type dependence? I don't see any use on the screen. Not on this screen, but I think when you Oh, here, here like yes. What's the difference between your transposition? Okay. I can see what this could introduce type dependency when I use you, but not in what you say it's equivalent to. No, no, no. I, I'm not saying this is equivalent. Sorry. I'm saying that this template, one of the functions it may generate when you use it is this one. And you may write this. But the template can generate other things. I, well, I yes, the template can generate other things too. I can't write this because this has got this in a strange place. Right. Well, uh, I, that's also our proposal. You should be able to write this. Uh, you don't have to. This feature does not require uh, using a template. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. But I was thinking because we're always deducing that you is a CV qualified reference, possibly to always this class. I don't think we need to have type dependency. Injected into use of you. Ah, uh, let, let's let's well, get I'm, ahead. I'm let's get ahead. Powerful. All right. So yeah. what what I wanted to say was that you should be like confident in the fact that this means this. You've seen this before. It's just a more obvious way to write this. And I remember Odin saying, "Wow, I can teach this to my people without you know having to explain why you stick the reference qualifiers in the end, and then you have nothing of that qualifier in the function." So that makes no sense. Plus, you can use const west now. <laughs> yes? Why is it that you get this optional ref and not this optional ref with west? Oh, because you can do that. Uh, that's not this proposal. This is already legal syntax, okay. other than the this. You can omit the template parameters of the name of the class anywhere inside the class, okay. and we don't like typing. Okay. That, that's the only reason. I could have written the T, but it's noise. <laughs> All right. Um, so yes, this is like this slide for like the fourth time now. Um, and of course, you could write this, and that's not a template either. And it's exactly this. And voila. I mean, just you know, uh, I would say this is easier to teach. I I don't know about you, but um, obviously for completeness. Um, yeah, we can, that's, yes. Dry is nice. I didn't say this is the entire set. In fact, it is very important that this is not the entire set, but we'll get to that. <laughs> yes, David. I don't see how to do that. I, I think you could, yeah. 
I, I don't see why you couldn't explicitly instantiate them. But you could use forward as a widget. You could use forward as a widget when you instantiate them so you didn't have to prove your code twice. You would just say, this is my template, now I will instantiate it for exactly these qualifiers. Right. And you would be content in the knowledge that stood forward does what you need. Yeah. Yes, yeah. tutorial. Right, uh, there were other hands. Yes? Uh, one thing that I really like is if you use the explicit Z parameter in any case, is that it becomes really, really easy to explain random access to people who use programs. That's my point, yes, <laughs> hell yes. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Peter, <laughs> says, <laughs> Peter says um, that it would help him train his people because for people new to programming, implicit parameters are weird. Um, so yeah, this, this gives us more dry. We're, yeah, I mean, C++ is far from dry, but this is better. Um, all right, so to, I already hinted at this. We need this, like we really need this because Vector has all of these accessors and it would probably have a few more. Uh, and as, uh, I don't think it would be that difficult to specify the other overloads if we had this, right? Yeah, but then we've got 16 functions rather than four, and you're viewing every time I'm writing an access or exploding a factor of four. That's not. Yeah, you just use a template. Yeah. No, but I see, that's the problem you're solving. Yes, exactly. So we can write vector and optional and all of these nice things much easier now. Um, but do we get more for basically for free with this relatively small feature? Yeah, with this party trick. Yeah, this is exactly a party trick, right? Um, but let's start conservative. Uh, people have already figured this one out. Uh, we get by value methods if we choose to allow them. Um, you could constrain that the parameter type is a ref type, but why? <laughs> why would you do that? Um, we really need them, in fact, um, because if you think of substr, it, which is somewhere inside basic string, right? Sorry, is, is the font too small? Um, so substr, thankfully, is really easy to implement because you have a constructor that, that does exactly what you need. Um, but it always allocates. And that's, you know, that's not optimal. We like optimal. Uh, so what if we could take this by value and then this is the way we can implement substr? Uh, you know, we take ourselves as a value, which means if we already have an R value, it'll be move constructed, so no cost, and then we can do the, the clamp thing, which is that, which you really don't wanna do because it's overflow prone and you need to do it right, and then we copy the substr to the beginning of the buffer, and then we resize the buffer and return self. Voila, bam, optimal code. No, con no templates. Yes? That's not optimal. optimal because you, you copy the whole string and then you take my substring of it. It's I, not there. You can't even take yeah, I guess that's true. Okay, fine. Bad example. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it looks like you've prevented return value optimization. Uh, optimization. It's true. It, it, it gets moved out. Fine. Okay, bad example. But we <laughs> yes? Do we need the pipe basic string there? Can't you insert it from there? Um, in this particular case, you need the type because you're taking it by value and you need to spell out what it is. Yeah, you're, you're overloading, overloading by its reference list. Yeah. Yes. So yes, Arthur. That is, you could make this a template taking you and say this you self. Yes, but I needed a contrived example. Yeah. Yes, I, well, I needed a, yes, uh, yeah, uh, Jeff. In this function, would self, uh, uh, ampersand self be different from this? No. This and this and self always alias. Yes, Maybe Peter. Just a silly question, but could you use auto determination this? So instead of making an explicit template, you could make this auto self? Uh, I think you could. Uh, and still have auto parameters? Yeah, we don't have auto parameters, yes. Um, yeah, uh, Zach. Uh, so uh, did you mean to say that 
star this in self alias or? Yes, yeah, star this in self alias. Yes, thank you. Sorry, that was dumb. <laughs> yes, uh, Ben. So, if I remember rightly, your original sort of uh, thing for this was a Dota pattern. Yes, and I have that at some point, I, th I think. Uh, but yes, the builder pattern is another really useful thing to do with this. Um, yes, the, the, sorry. Do you allow the base argument to go elsewhere in the first position? So you could add on an increment to the first object at an end um, So we had this uh, at the, ju just before the identifier in the first version of the paper, and that didn't work right. So I'm talking about the entire argument. Ah, okay. Uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, yes, Matt. It's just an observation about, about the teachability. We're talking about this might be a teachability aid. Yeah. Here, this, there's a surprising aspect where if that was a, if for whatever reason you made a substrate that actually mutated the object in some way and you were expecting to call it on the thing, you would have the original object from the caller, you would call this method on it, and it would mutate this temporary copy that had been made, and then you're back to the original object. And that seems kind of surprising for what a, a, a non commutable method. Wait, wait, wait. You, you wouldn't return the original object. Well, I mean, let's say that it was just like a, a, just a general mutate, like clear. Oh, yes. It's clear, and it's a, it's a programming mistake, right? It's, it's oh, 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 OK. But it's, it's a, yet another weird edge case to say to someone, well, you, took, you called a method on that object, but actually you've made a completely new object that's a temporary that you're now clearing and then that is then throwing away. Hence, hence whether we allow this as a question for the committee that is orthogonal to the original paper. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just gav giving all of the things we could possibly get from here. Um, and that's why I said it's five papers because the, these things are mostly orthogonal. Yes, I was there. I don't get it. I'm getting very confused by the ongoing discussion and we know how to do pass by value already. I don't see why I want a funky pass by value member if it's going to just raise more confusion and the kind of things that Matt was talking about. That is perfectly fine for a committee meeting where we are discussing the yes no question of whether we want this, but we may we figured out how it would work if we wanted it. Uh, yes, Arthur. Do you have a slide coming up on operator plus plus? Yes. Uh, so all is very kind of if you uh, limit form functions. <laughs> it's orthogonal. It's orthogonal. It's orthogonal. Okay. Yes. Let's 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 go on. All right. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Um, Elizar is now terrified. All right. Um, I will consider you terrified. You get a modifier. Um, <laughs> Um, all right, so yeah, the, the point is if the string object is a null value, it gets copy constructed, and like it, all of the obvious things. Um, so the point is that uh, you really need this if you need to type erase a single method that needs to have value semantics but is a method. There's no other way to do it, in fact. I don't know in which cases you would need to do it, but I am assured there are such cases. Um, so if you put, you know, a method into a std function and it, like, th okay, never mind. Like, you yes. Yes, you can't put an overload set in the function. Uh, and you, if you need a value semantics method chainy thing, then you need it. And uh, if you want to type erase a builder pattern which apparently some people want to do, then this is exactly what you need. <laughs> um, but okay, I'm, I'm not gonna pass judgments on what people do with their code. All I wanna give you is the tools to, you know, hopefully write good code. Use the yeah, use the language as it's intended to be used, and if you have more tools, then perhaps you can have better use. Um, all right, so uh, next thing that we can do, Boom! We can do boost operator without CRTP. Um, now, uh, this is for people in the room who do not know who, what CRTP is. Um, this is sort of how boost operator works. Um, we have 
you know, my strong int that, you know, is incrementable and all the other operators that don't fit on a slide. Um, and it has operator plus plus, the prefix version already defined, which is four words and, you know, that is the obvious thing. Um, and we have in boost operator this little template that takes as a CRTP base class, you know, my int and then generates my int by, you know, this weird static cast thingy that you need, which is extremely difficult to teach. And then you, well, do forward and you return. Yes, Lisa. Does CRTP stand for something? Yes, it stands for curiously recurrent template pattern. Which has been curiously reinvented. So. Yeah. It, it has been curiously, curiously recurring, recurring. <laughs> um, and yes, teaching it is always a pain because people don't know that you can static cast references. That's number one. And when you explain what the hell that means, they don't understand how the hell you can static cast to a base class if it's only runtime determinable. And then you tell them, no, 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 it's actually compile time determinable. And then some old compilers don't actually diagnose the fact that you passed the wrong base in correctly and crash, uh, which is amazing and if, when your compiler crashes it's really difficult to explain to a newbie why you should ever permit such code. Um, so anyway, you <laughs> uh, so this is how we can do it with this example because um, what does this mean, right? We, we don't need to make it a template, we just make operator plus plus a template. Yes, Matt. Right. Yeah, and and you and we also have some attributes coming up, right? Yes. That yeah. Yeah, no, no unique address. Yeah, no unique address. So you you just do that. It's it's solved. Fine. Um, so why the question is why does this work? Yes. You need to like take a copy but, but I'm taking it by value. value. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you're not incrementing the original object you called it on. You're only incrementing the copy. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you have three hours of sleep. Yes, okay. <laughs> it's true. Um, yes, I, I, did, I do the exact wrong thing. <laughs> you take a reference, you make a copy. And you yeah, yeah, yeah. You take my reference, you make a copy. But Okay, the, the moral of the slide still stands. Uh, T is deduced to the derived type. Yeah, you just inject a template function. Yeah, I've just injected a template function, however. Yes, I was there. I'm getting more sold, I don't want the by value thing, but I like the first one. Right. <laughs> All right. The examples are confirming my bias. Oh, okay, yeah, fine, fine. I am totally fine by not having the value thing. <laughs> I, that's why it's in a separate that's paper. That's what you asked for. Right, yeah. Um, <laughs> I I'm, I'm not coming to the, to the committee meeting anyway because I don't have the time. <laughs> yes, Matt? So one of the things I remember when, when Eric Niebler started pushing for um, global, global structs to have global limited op, uh, function call operators as opposed to just you know, functions was certain compiled people were saying, oh, this is actually bad because you can't take it, you can't make your object be taken by value. And uh, apparently, in some cases, like it, it, this proved. I'm, I'm not a compiler person, so I don't remember the exact thing. But I can see using the value bit for an overloaded function call operator on a stateless thing. Yeah, I mean, the, here's the thing: the slide is wrong. Okay, but um, the point is, T deduces to the derived type. So that I guess um, makes us question what this and self referred to inside the body of the function because suddenly self is definitely a reference or yeah self is a name for the derived object so what is this no, I mean in, in general the, the, the address in self and this may differ if there are multiple inheritance results yes so that yeah yes um, so will you just say an actual object 
they always alias, but that doesn't mean that they're the same object. Yes, this is hygienic CRTP. Yes, and it's it is yeah it is it is exactly equivalent to the static cast we saw before. This offset is statically determinable and is just baked into an instruction, and that's it when you access it. So you don't need the second parameter or anything like you just apply the offset refer to member. Um, yeah, it's basically the implicit static cast, but it's safe, and the compiler made sure it is because it deduced the type. So again, you don't need to teach CRTP, and you can do this. Like, th yes. And the rest of the trick is bike shedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is perfectly fine. <laughs> um, it strikes me that, that taking it as an extra parameter is is more confusing than effectively introducing a uh, a syntax where you can get access to yourself as the derived type, as that C type. But this already does that. Yeah. But there's, there's also yeah. yeah Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So the 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 cool thing is it chains correctly, right? This prints two, right? Because if you have bar and you know a foo inherits from bar and but they have m value the shadows, um, if you have x get, um, get is implemented in terms of the you know implicit this parameter it would print 2 because bar is a base class we initialized <laughs> it with 2 uh, and this is this is an old slide i guess there's two float okay fine um, yes this is the same thing as this this prints 2 but if you said self.m value it would print 3 right um, so that's the point. We are not changing the meaning of this or implicit access. That stays the same. Yes, Vittorio? You were saying that and type always alias, but that's not true with implicit? They always alias, which is one of them is a sub-object of the other. It doesn't mean that they point to the same place, oh. but they always alias. <laughs> uh, Arthur had his hand up first. Yes. Uh, but then if we go back to the original example where you had like way back in optional thing, you have to go back to it. But like the optional thing where you had like a, a get method template and it used like return, you know, stood for something. Ah. <laughs> ah, I knew that I, I knew that if anyone was gonna figure that out, it was gonna be you. <laughs> I have a bonus slide for this. I have a bonus slide for this. We'll hopefully get there, but we're halfway through and we're uh, not, well, we, I guess we're halfway through the talk-ish. Well, I mean, what you mean is a type trace that'll take the value category itself and apply it. <laughs> Stop! Yes, yes, that is what it's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is of this and self. Um, yes, yeah, Ella's there. I'm just going to amplify. This terrifies me. <laughs> um, we also get recursive lambdas for free. This is chapter four. Um, because, I mean, now that we've already seen the feature, right, this is obvious, I hope, that this works. Um, because the call operator of a lambda is, well, just the call operator of the lambda. It's a method. Therefore, if you take the explicit self, he has been. Sorry to interrupt. This solves my original problem. That's yes. This isn't the motivation. In fact, this is what solves your original problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, yes. 
this solves your original problem. Um, so th this is another type of lambda that, let's say you have it in a condition variable. Don't do work in a condition variable, okay? <laughs> but let's say you did, um, as a contrived example. Um, you, if you're waiting for that specific value, you do something and then you destroy yourself because you are, an, uh, you're, you know, uh, or you register yourself as a callback again and you can either move yourself or copy yourself and it'll be safe regard, like regardless of how you were called. If you are an X value, you will move. If you're, yeah, then? Just a comment that the original problem came from considering how to chain integers and carry values through optimism. Ah, okay. Well, that, that's how. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the lambda can call itself recursively through self uh, because it has a reference to itself. Um, <laughs> oh, Who or this alias? No. Uh, <laughs> in, <laughs> you did not capture this, therefore you do not have this. So then you have self without a this. Well, yes, because you're in the lambda. This is not defined. We're not changing the meaning of this in the function body. That was one of the principles. Yes, Lisa? Yeah. Uh, uh, Lee. Yeah. I think it's really important to understand that this be, uh, this um, um, this annotation, right? This gives you a way to annotate. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this gives you a way to annotate. What is the given name and annotate? What is the uh, static type, you know, of the object on which the method was called? Pure. In this case, the method that is being called is over the threat, and the static type is whatever the type of the lambda is. Yes. Yeah, so it's just it just gives you a handle to that. It does. It has actually. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And in particular, you can't say self dot waiting for. You can't. You can't use self to get at the individual closure object. Yes, you can. You cannot use self to get at your closure object, uh, because the members of the closure object have no name. Yeah, but you do get to the closure object. It's just that you can't access. The Only object. implicitly, right? You 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 can refer to things in your closure object by name. Ah. Right. Same as ever. But this dot name is not defined. The closure object members have no name. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so, uh, Jeff. Um, you said a few times that you don't change the meaning of bits. In the function body. Um, but in the case of taking by value, it seems you are changing the meaning of bits. Because in the current system stuff, it always, it always be the address of the object you're called on. And in your this no ref self, you are changing the address of the copy. That is true. No. However, that's, that's, that's not true because you the, the copy is may I, the copy is what you're being called on yeah, effectively. Yeah. If you're not doing not something, you're doing call to the key. Yes. Yeah, but okay, so please stop being fixated on by value. It might not happen. <laughs> I would still I would still like this feature even without by value. Yes, I was there. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. If you did have the this be be you know the original meaning, mm -hmm. then your post your uh, post increment would be just be plus plus star this return p. Yes, but it I think it's I think it's actually far more dangerous to to let there be a situation where star this and self do not alias. I think that is far worse. Uh, I think that having them be the derived and the base object is relatively simple to explain because that's how it should work. The, the, the thing where the, the method is defined should be where this points because of course it should be. Um, and self deduces to the statically derived type, therefore self should be a reference of that type, therefore obvious. Right? It's not like we had a whole lot of options to consider. No, this is the only the only sane way to do it. Uh, so when you say, okay, star this and self do not alias, I'm like, this will never get through the committee. <laughs> I, I don't think that, that the value calling is getting through the committee. We, we, we can try. <laughs> okay, uh, Odin. Couldn't you emulate pretty much all the value stuff by uh, taking it as a templated ref ref and then just 
just just doing T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you can just. Yeah, yeah. You you can. It's true. You don't strictly need the by value uh, if you are allowed overload it's sets. One line of code more, basically. No, but the problem is if you need a concrete function that does both, you're out of luck. What do you mean both? Yeah. If it, if it makes a copy, if it's... If it's yeah, if, if, you, are, if, it, if you can call it in both... Con if you need to take an address of a function, which you are going to call with either, either by copy or by move into the parameter, then you don't have the luxury of having an overload set there. Oh, yes, <clears throat> yes, yes, I get it. That yeah, so that's when you need by copy. So, yeah. Sorry, by value. I'm sure we will argue a lot whether that's necessary to have or not. But it is not an integral part of, it is an orthogonal part of the proposal. We may choose to allow it, we may not. Nothing else falls into the drain if we do not. Uh, and in fact, all of these things that I'm talking about today are largely orthogonal. We can just say, even at, like, at the risk of inconsistency, we're just not going to allow this bit. There's no actual other way to do it. You either allow it or don't, but you do have a choice. Um, so this is recursive lambdas. You can have lambdas as containers, and you can... Now we get to forward like. <coughs> that's, that's Arthur's complaint. Um, in lambdas, you really do need forward like. It's actually not that horrible um, if you write it the right way. Uh, no, the, so, so the, the way you write it is by chaining two stud forwards one after the other. Can you explain what forward like is? Okay, so forward like is, now I gotta go to my bonus slides. Uh, okay, let me, let me just fast forward without you seeing everything. Um, forward like, <laughs> yeah, secrets to come and, uh, okay, so this is forward like, this is forward like, and the, the only magic widget in there is like t, uh, which just copies cvref qualifiers from like to t. Mine also depended on match cvref t, and I decided it was code d. So like t really just takes the cvref qualifiers of this type, uh, removes all qualifiers from that other type and applies and, and copies. It doesn't union. It yeah. just overwrites the cvref qualifiers of the second type with the, first, with the cvref qualifiers of the first type. That's all it does. And if you chain it like two stud forwards, then you can be reasonably convinced that this is correct. Um, I'm now you made me second guess myself if I wrote it weird. Um, it could it could honestly be that I switched them around. Let me see my implementation. This is always bad when you're doing slides too late. Um, oh yeah, wait. Oh, um, it's just. You you need it. I will explain why you need it. But this uh, damn, did I not load it? That's that's a problem. Th those were Kolmogorov machines for me. <laughs> uh, let me. Here, so. Yeah, I know. Let, let me. The thing is. All right. No, this is this is how it's implemented. I have tests. Um, so, yes, you you get t back to the value category it was passed in as, and then you forward it according to the value category that. Oh yeah, exactly. Yes. Right. 
So that's that's where I was going. So okay, let me let me find where we are. Oh, I should have remembered the slide number. Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. So this is what it does, right? Uh, so the the reason you need it is because you don't have the value category of the captured value. You only have the value category of yourself. But you can't refer to the captured value as self.value because that's not a thing, right? It's probably something like underscore underscore GCC value or something stupid like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yes? This lambda is wrong, isn't it? Is it? It should be mutable. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. No, we think by uh, reference. It's an R value ref. It's an R value ref. So it's this uh, pointer uh, and X value. I'm kind of blind. Is value a. Oh, it may or may not be an R value ref. It's doing the deduction. Yeah, it's doing the deduction. So if the lambda is an L value returned by const ref, and if the lambda is an R value returned by ref ref and move the value up. Yes, Arthur? Yeah, the I didn't think of that. That's a good one. Mutable just doesn't mean anything in the Yeah, yeah. You can't apply mutable or const to such a lambda with Yeah, I keep getting confused by this feature, but I think I'm getting all of it. Yeah. So I guess you're right. Mutable does get deduced in this context. Aren't you capturing values? I, yes, you're right. I, I, I should have captured it by, by value. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. That my bad. Uh, yes, Jeff. I'm surprised by this use case because I was I've been waiting for this all all the, all the talk. There's some solution to this problem, but I'm expecting the, the problem you applied to to be uh, when I am writing a function where I want to template out the ref qualifiers and cons in a in a immobile class, um, but I don't want to change my lookup rule if someone calls me on text. So yes. Um, where I'm always going to have to do this, I'm going to have to do forward like t of the u or whatever the type itself is, and then pass star this in order to get my lookup to work on this. Uh, that's only for lambdas. You only need. Yeah. Uh, if I want my lookup, say my, my Oh yeah. If you want your lookup to work on on I yes. Need to do my lookup yes. And then recover the value category of u. Yes. Yes, you do. And, and I think that's going to be idiomatic. Yes, forward like is going to be idiom idiomatic. I want a shorter name than that, Rick. I'm going to write it in most places that I use it. We, we've tried to shorten forward. That didn't work out. <laughs> Look, it, I, am, I am perfectly fine with any solution or bike shed to forward like. Uh, in fact, forward like is not in the paper. It is supposed to be a separate library edition that will get bike shed to hell and back. But you, it turns out if we ship this as a language feature, Something like forward like is needed. CBRO. <laughs> Fine. Isn't that short? Um, <laughs> yes? Can we return to the mutable thing? I'm, my brain is yes. Like, so, uh, no, right, there, right. so, what we've done here is obviously we've captured, you're going to capture by value, I think. Value by value. So let's, if, yes, value is captured by Let me fix the slide so it stops being confusing. <laughs> All right. There we go. Oh yeah. And then we've got that by that's a constant. Like the, the, the operator print print is const because we don't have mutable on the input, right? Uh, not anymore because you're actually getting the ref qualifiers right there. Yeah, because mutable gives you a const. Uh, yes. Why why is what? What? Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> why is the first one by const ref? Because I would imagine if the lambda is a const L value returned by const L um, be value. Because, so be because as far as <coughs> I understand, that's what it deduces to, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, if the lambda is a non-const L value, it should return by a non-const L value. OK, fine. Do the, the insert the correct rules. OK, fine. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to prove it. 
provide them. I'm not providing the rules. I'm interpreting the rules as I remember them in my three hours a night of sleep. <laughs> yeah, mutable doesn't make any sense here. Yes, Louis. Yes, yes, agreed. Yes, David. Uh, to like, go even further, like the type of that parameter completely replaces mutable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So mutable comes and any, uh, uh, um, any rest qualifiers at the end of line, the lambda are just disallowed. Yes. yes. Matt? So, yeah, I was just going to say, it, it's kind of strange. We're kind of getting hung up on it here, but it was the exact same thing for member functions. Yeah. yeah. When, you, when you use this. Yeah, the, the, the one difference is that in member functions, you use the exact same keywords for what for the qualifier. Right, yeah, yes. so and right. here it's inverted, which is confusing. Yeah. Right, but on the other hand, I think that ac this actually makes the language far more uniform because <laughs> everything <laughs> uses the same freaking syntax. I agree. I, I, I'm saying it makes it confusing at the first glance. I'm really yes. But, but the thing is, we all knew what this was supposed to do, and even though I had an error on my slide, you managed to spot it, right? <laughs> yes, Arthur. I think there's room, theoretically, in regular member functions, with object member functions, uh, if I say I'm going to deduce it with auto ref ref, with this auto ref ref, and then I put comps on the end, am I saying... I honestly don't think that should be allowed. Why, why don't you just write const auto ref ref? Yeah. That would be a that, that wouldn't be the deduction. Yes, I was there. I don't think that Arthur's completely out of his tree here because you you basically get two of them. You get the const ref and the const ref ref, but you wouldn't get the ref and the ref ref. Yeah. yeah. So you're still getting dry for two out of four. So, okay. Okay. That's something you would want, like conceivably, or should we just say? Yeah, no, no. Just don't why do is, that. Yeah, why is you can have the qualifier in the type of the parameter, so you don't have to have it at the end of the And thing. I think that it should be one or the other, but yeah. not both. Yeah. So otherwise, it's very normal feature in the language to be able to deduce the type of something and then constrain it in yeah. a central place to the definition. Yes, that's weird. I don't think we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we know how this is supposed to work now, even though the slide is wrong. Um, <laughs> but that's my point, right? It's so intuitive. You know what it's supposed to do, and you can fix my bugs in the talk, right? Like, um, all right. So, so we we get. So this is one of my favorite slides, actually. What, what? Right? <laughs> so, so for, yes, Louis? Is the idea here that basically the self and the lambda gets deduced to... The derived type, which is the overload. Overloads. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. You're calling it overload, which means that you're basically um, recursively, right? You're recursively All right, so I can explain this for, for the room and, okay. So what's happening here, right, is um, that std overload inherits from all of the lambdas that you give it. Um, I think this is going to become real fun when we can concept constrain them. Uh, <laughs> uh, and because it inherits from all the lambdas, uh, all of the call operators of the lambdas get added to the public interface of std overload. Uh, remember, the implicit this pointers of the lambda still refer to their own closures, so the lambda still mean the same thing. Um, however, self is now pointing to std overload, which means that from a lambda, you can call again the same std overload that was called with this. You can find your friends. And you, yes, you can find your friends. Uh, and so you can do recursive visitation the way nature intended. <laughs> um, so that's nice. Yes? Shouldn't the leaf overload be returning value and not one? 
uh, it's it num leaves just means how many you have. Oh, you're telling how many you have. Okay. Yeah. 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 You're not evaluating. I'm not evaluating. Yes, Arthur. Then I'm just going to write my own std overload in three lines of code. Okay. <laughs> yes, I was there. I thought it was accepted, but maybe it's not. Oh. There's a paper. There's a paper? Okay, Louis. That's going to be the, yes. And so self is an identity to whatever you're calling that on. Right, so I can break it, but I think I have to be kind of malicious to get to me. You, yeah. to you can certainly break everything because we know your template code. <laughs> um, that's in a good way. Ponder that one. All right. Uh, um, all right, now we get to the fun parts. <laughs> Oh, it gets, that's why I wanted you here, because I think we have the solution to why all the previous papers like just evaporated. So here's the thing, Unicor for, unicorn call syntax. <laughs> um, here is, first of all, opt-in only. Because what does this mean, right? Like, tell me what this means. Is it obvious? Yes, so it's a method that we are exporting to the enclosing namespace effectively. So we should be able to call it both ways. Um, and I mean, that's really it, right? Yes? Do you have access to this uh, you know, arrow and begin? It's a method. So what's your code as a free function? It's a method. Okay, so this It's an extension method. What? No, no, this is not an extension. <laughs> No, 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 no but, but in, 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 the, in the sense of how it works, it is, it's an extension method. So, it's yes, Louis? Is that this keyword is actually valid to use inside that function? That is my question. Yes. Thank you. What does this print? Is it valid for places where the uh, man structure has a different call uh, compared to the number structure? Uh, you have to pick one, and the compiler knows. Yes. I, I can write a method that has a different calling convention because compilers have extensions for that, and that's fine. Uh, is it? The, uh, oh, yeah, that's supposed to say using begin t. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay, fine. Imagine gets there. Okay, my point is. The <laughs> yes, A and B are the same. Yes, it's the same function pointer. This, th these are not two functions. These are not two code objects. The, this is one function. Exactly. Well, it's only discoverable from ADL or as a method lookup. I mean, as a method call. Yes. Yes, it's that's true, but it. Uh? Yeah. 
Uh, yes, David. Yes. And and we can uh, uh, Vittorio. Uh, we'll we'll get to that. So so this is. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, I was there. What does Deckel type begin? Uh, Deck. Both appointed to member and a free function. What does Deckel type as a thing? That's that's a very good question. Um, so, so I actually think it should just be a free function. I think it should be a free function pointer. And it could be it could be somehow annotated that it's actually callable like a member. But it shouldn't be a member function pointer. I don't think so. I, unless unless yeah. you want to make those uh, be able to be virtual. Mm -hmm. that, that I don't. I don't think you want this. I would rather have it to be a free function. If yeah. I want m on the begin, I have to go self dot m on the begin, yeah. rather than expect it to be in scope. Okay. So so that's I a. Don't regular free function. Okay. Okay. So but, but this is method to free function. This is one paper. That's another paper. <laughs> <laughs> They are relatively orthogonal and do not conflict. So, so if, I, if I could just go to back, back to our, what Alex said there. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we could just add wording to say you can use a, this pointer in this kind of function. Yeah. And by the way, the, these are not proposed things. In our paper does not have uh, this. And I don't like it. All right. Yeah. It, so, it drives too many of my yeah, wiring. OK. And doesn't seem necessary. I mean, do, do this, this then. Okay, I mean, as I said, these are two separate papers. I did say this is a talk about five separate papers that are orthogonal except for the first one on which everything rests. So you have one paper that is, that's a dependency for all other four, um, and I'm fine with never getting the other four. I am fine with just getting the deduction of <laughs> types in the parameter. That's, that's fine. But if we chose to allow this syntax, this is where it would lead. And I thought that was the interesting bit for this audience uh, because we like breaking the language um, and finding errors on slides. Uh, <laughs> so this is the other direction. If you have a free function, you can annotate it with the this parameter and it's callable both ways. And in that case, because it's not a friend of the class, you have to use you know, self. Uh, and in this case, mbegin is public. So that's fine. Yes, I was there. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I'm after the fusion of these. I don't like either of them. Because they, they, they both got distinct problems. This brings in a lot of the scary parts of UFCS, which is as a class designer, you no longer control your interface. Go in the friend function way, you still control the interface by what you put out. But then I didn't like the implicit member function. Going through the self that we've got here seemed the right way to do the other paper. So here's the thing. I thought about this. Um, you already do not control the interface of your class because free functions are, are like callable through ADL are in your interface. But they don't have friend access. Sure. This, this, uh, this, this yeah. Access okay. There. So um, the thing is, I could see there being an, a use for this by you putting your, I'm going to call them intrusive methods, into uh, a separate namespace and then using them in in the local scope so that you can call something uniformly. I can see that happening. But yeah, my, my member function syntax is no longer disabling ADL because you've now made my member function a syntax. ADL and ADL is already known. Yes, it's true. Your member function syntax is no longer disabling ADL and I always thought that was a loophole that I wanted to close. Uh, Whoa. <laughs> uh, yes, David. Mm -hmm. um, then effectively when somebody you know, types in whatever dot, that's going to be populated with all the member functions as well as any one that happens to exist in that translation that, that applies to that. That is annotated with this parameter that can in fact take it. And that's both good and bad and I think this feature would definitely need to be used very judiciously. Yeah, so, so this, this still has the problems that UFC has had only on the Smaller scale. It has the you same see, function pointer. Yeah, it only, it all, 
like, like the overall set, you, you are considering it's only poisoned by things that are meant to poison you. Or, or yes. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't grab things that, are complete, that weren't meant for you. Right? Yeah, so because so it, it, yeah. It, I'm not saying it's, it doesn't have problems. It has less problems than so me. So if I have a member function that calls its request itself unqualified, and one of these things has been brought into scope, if I'm a, I'm a <coughs> member function template, um, does that mean this is going to hijack what I thought was a clear and ambiguous call within my own class? I, I, I'm not saying those problems are solved, solved right? I'm just, I'm just, that's the yes, it, I'm it will, that, and I don't. I'm just saying that the, yes. that the number of things that poison your overload set is smaller. Is what I, oh, uh, okay. Yes. Are you saying you would follow the same rules as in the last uh, few uh, whatever letters it is? Um, <coughs> you do the normal lookup. If that fails, then you go and do the follow. No, I don't want to do that you because. Um, I'm terrified of this thing coming in ahead of and being a better match. Yeah. This is what I want. You want that I want if that if you provide both, it's a name lookup error. I mean, I. I th so, so this is a friend. What what if the first begin was member? If the first begin was a member and it was a template, uh, it would still not compile. I think. Uh, so so <coughs> if I have a member and somebody writes an equally good three functions. Yes, the then they're an idiot and they should not do that. Then they break my code. But that's, yeah. that's well, they're not friends. Yeah. Well, no, they don't think <laughs> no, 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 no. Somebody, no, no, no. What, 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 is, what I think he's saying is somebody can make my code to not compile anymore. You can already have that problem by somebody just adding a function. No, no, no. Not when I use just a member function. Yes, but if you're protecting with member functions over for from that reason, you're already you already have other problems. Like I I don't think that using the member function syntax is a way to like somehow run away from your overload set, right? Yeah, that, I, if, yeah, if, yeah. If, if this doesn't compile when the first one is not a friend, then I don't like. All right, uh, David. Um, I, I think it is a really big deal if we do this because basically that the namespace for anything which happens to take in a template parameter, all those names are now basically we can't add a new name to any member without the potential of breaking the code. Well, then let's not do it. <laughs> uh, LS there. You've written many, many <coughs> times increasing the surface area of ill-formed programs, no diagnostic required. Because if one of these gets added after my ah. service, you know, I've resolved my function one way, in one view, and now it goes a different way in another one because somebody's added one of these things. Yeah. It's yeah, an old well, form program, no diagnostic required. Yeah. We're inviting lots of undefined behavior that is not easily diagnosed. That, those are good points. I think we need to revisit how we think uh, this do works. Those, those, do that problem, yeah, so then. Does that problem go with, away if you prefer member function? With this particular, like this first of the yeah. two slides, where it has to be a friend, you don't really have that problem class, because so oh, you just add a friend to your class. Yes, right? and only the second one that's yes, and that's why I said these are orthogonal papers, right? We might, we very well might only adopt this or only this one. If you have both, then it gets to be this. You know, like this kind of stuff, David. That's why I'm saying they're separate papers. I, I really want to separate them. I want the, the really constrained bit first because it's really useful and then we can start arguing about this stuff all day. I still might want other bits. So that's why I said it's five papers that are completely orthogonal, like the four are completely orthogonal and we, we can totally adopt none of them. Uh, yes. Uh, because you can, you, you still control your interface of the class tightly, right? No, because in terms of just calling, in terms of calling, I understand why I would want to add a method from outside the class and why that might make me my life easier as a user, quote unquote, until someone breaks me later. This is all the things we're talking about. But this, why is this my life as a user? Because, because uh, the free function begin and the member function begin are now the same function. Uh, 
Yeah. So, so during the reaction, we've had the things even vaguely touching uh, UFCS in the past. I would recommend not even like, skip getting as far away from this as possible until the, the paper won. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Jeff. I think this actually solved all the core problems with USCS that we we uh, went back and forth from in committee. In because it's all about the lookup being either hijacked or having bad overload rules. And because this is a new opt-in syntax, you can have the correct overload resolution rules without breaking any existing code. And that's why I think this has got the only chance of getting into it. Yes. L is there. Most, most of what we just said that I don't see many problems with this, other than I want to see self dot end again. I don't see much value in it, but that wouldn't mean I'd have to vote against it. I don't see the problems coming with this one. But okay, I mean, that, I, I'm sure I will rewatch this video and write everything that you just said into our paper thing so that we if can you come. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Like so, if you do a lot of coding in generic context, then this. And that's what I say. I wouldn't vote against it yeah. just because no. I don't see value in it. I don't see any danger in this before yeah. now. Yeah. 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 So I I got bitten with needing UFCS in exactly that context, right? Yeah. I was generating interfaces. It's really nice to have the concrete methods be also the free function callable because generic code usually is annoying to write if you have to choose the syntax. But, you know, yes, we will definitely steer far away from this for the first paper. <laughs> and, and yes, th as I said, completely orthogonal and I am fine if it never gets in as long as the first bit gets in. All right. Um, we, I think, have covered all of the possible uniform call syntax. Uh, I don't, don't, don't oh. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, yes, this anywhere. Excellent. That's another paper. Mm. Right. Uh, I've got a lot of five work, and I only can't support this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think it's fairly obvious that once we have the, you know, the we can add methods to the class from outside. This is still UFCS, kind of, so it's 5.2, right? It, and it's a separate paper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think this is how it needs to work if we choose to adopt this. Um, it might make sense to have this not be the first parameter because of stuff like find, which is far more obvious to say find needle in haystack. But then if you have a haystack.find, it better take needle, and needle.find haystack makes no sense, right? <laughs> uh, Odin was a second faster. Uh, yeah, so j just from my understanding, those two find functions, those aren't the same function pointer though, right? Because otherwise you'd have to like swizzle things in the ABI under the hood. Oh no, 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 those are the same function pointer. Uh, you, you just, you, you can only have one this in the parameter, which I assume is Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Separate paper. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. It's just binding, right? Yes, uh, Jeff. So when I uh, heard the whole uh, the idea of this being a different part, uh, point in the ground of it, I imagined an entirely different use of this being a member function and using it to call which register my this function is. Uh, <laughs> well, but what we have a keyword for this is called register. <laughs> yeah, Matt. You're saying this can be done in member function, like in class scope, and have it be a member function in change that order of this. I I think that if you had this as a member and made it friend in like the first proposal, this should work also. Like. If you're, and what if it's in the middle 
I think that if you're calling it from class scope, uh, it is implicitly dereferenced by this already. So you would call it using effectively this syntax. You would do, you would do find needle. You don't think of it as moving, you think of it as aligning. Yeah. yeah. Um, Can that be in the middle? Yeah. 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 So, so then you have the front case of um, uh, x, this of, of your class type, and then what? this. Sorry, not this, but another of your class type that is defaulted. And then you call it with two parameters using the default. And then, yeah. uh -huh. and then it's like that's, well, that's valid in both cases. And it has different meanings. I like you will explain this to me later because I need to put it in the paper. Peter. What happens if you have a function that's also a tree function uh, and you make a class that inherits from that as not the first a class inherits from? As in, you need a base offset. To your pre function pointer. And pre function pointer doesn't have a space for a base offset, so any of these functions, when taking the average of, would have to be a member function pointer in all cases. Uh, well, it, you, you can do that at binding time, right? Yeah, you'd have to know which one's binding to. Well, but you know, you know the static type at bind time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's this haystack, not this thing that, deri that, that, that uh, uh, derives from haystack. Yeah. So, so if you were to call it with a thing that derives from yeah. haystack, there would be a derived to base conversion, which would take care of that offset. Yeah, you, you always get the reference to haystack. Yeah. So then you have a function pointer that takes reference to haystack and a class that's not a haystack. Yeah. The conversion yeah. happens before the conversion. The conversion yeah. happens after call that's the same pro, you know, potential that you have in every one of these. Yeah. 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 Like this is just introducing another bind syntax. It's, it introduces absolutely nothing else. Right, so overload sets are a concern. That kind of stuff is not a concern because it stays the same. Uh, David. So if you define a lambda at global scope, and the lambda has a this parameter which isn't a first parameter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that the, this parameter just gets elided from the parameter list because there's no way to call a lambda with a uh, you know, UFCS kind of syntax. Well, the lambda operates friends is not friends, so it's not in the global scope. Yes, it's not in the global scope, right. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I, okay, so, so here's the thing. I, I have two and a half minutes left. I, I, I think we can continue the discussion later, but I want to show one thing before the camera turns off. Uh, yeah, okay, the bonus slides are the, the, the okay, the, ah, God, <laughs> yay, uh, this is what I wanted to show, yes, amazing, this is what I wanted to show, um, you can have mutually recursive lambdas with this, um, yes, this terminates, <laughs> uh, there's a the proof. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, you're right. If you prove this terminates, you get the Fields Medal. But the point is here, we can totally have recursive lambdas uh, using, you know, uh, tag dispatch. So the tag is effectively the lambda name. And uh, the, the nice, the, w the reason I say is they're safe is that your entire mutually recursive set is contained within that call to std overload. So there's nothing that they call recursively outside, right? So it's, if it's not easy to prove like this one, it's at least easier to inspect. <laughs> uh, yes, I was there. I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning because I really like the first thing. I think that's important and I want to make sure I get my feedback in. Sure, all the way back, to, way the back to the original to use the, um, auto this thing, whatever. The feature, this thing, yes. Yeah, so 
I'm really terrified by the idea where here you might be deduced to be anything other than optimal in this case, the specific class, because that's another hijack vector. The whole reason we're doing this type name u is so that the name u is available for the form. Um, if we could... Like, but the CRTP the is important, right? And it's... So if we can get this into... Take away the template type name u and do this auto ref ref. Um, can we then somehow get... You, you could, you could like, constrain... The and that way you've got both axes available, because I know you want this for the thing I don't want. Sometimes, right. by the way, we, we can have both forms. So the one that I think is safe because it doesn't get hijacked and can clearly be used and can be used much more readily. But the, this so never this gets hijacked, right? Self can get hijacked, well, but this can't. can then be something that is a derived type. And that is something I very much need. Very important to you and something that terrifies me. So I want a form I can use without that risk without blocking you getting this. Uh, oh yeah, it's, that's very easy, enable if on the top, uh, in the sem, or yeah, requires. super easy. Or, or requires, yeah. I want to a really, really simple thing because I think that would be the common use case. Requires is same decay optional. I mean. That's not something I can teach your average user. I want something that's really drop in simple. That, that should have Turn sailed when we that. dropped the ref, ref, ref. Who is the average user? Yeah, <laughs> 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 somebody who doesn't go to C++ now. <laughs> Yes, uh, okay, so we had Vittorio first, I think. Yeah, yeah, I was saying you can constrain, and with terse syntax, it would be simpler. It's, it's true, yes, with terse syntax, this gets simpler to constrain. Uh, Louis? You could do something like type name this or this variable. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get a form that I know is easy to type and not going to be derived, yeah. derived type. I'm, so I'm, I'm and then it solves a problem I had for a yeah. decade. And yeah, you, 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 could, you could, Vittorio is right, you could have like a concept same which is only satisfied by its parameter, yeah. and you would write like this same of optional. Reference. I don't want to be writing cryptic code. And that's not cryptic. Is, that <laughs> is for your average developer who doesn't right. do Concept, Concepts are not supposed to be cryptic. Introduce operator equals that works on types. <laughs> 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 yes, Vittorio. Yeah. So I don't think you should go blocking this. Yeah, I'm trying to find ways to enable it to go forward. Oh. I, I think that... I think it's really important. I think that this is way better than CRTP, and if you want to specifically disable that, the, the few characters that are going to be idiomatic here are not a problem, but the, that's the me. You always have decal. You always have decal type star this, right inside the body. So you wouldn't want this to not. I don't think Alistair would want this to not just optional. Yeah, you can just say optional. Yeah, just say optional it's true. Here, yeah. You know what the type is. Vittorio. You can say override style cat optional whatever. Uh, if you want self to be reduced to whatever, that's what it's going to be. But you have this. You have this. You don't need to static cast self to this because you have this. <laughs> Well, but that's why we have forward like. Yeah. Yes, but you also want to get that. So the combination of these things I think can be really fun. Uh, if you if you call forward like, can you say forward like u comma optional? Uh, optional. Well, no, because optional will always be just the value type optional. Uh, then then you have to figure out a way to say forward like. Here's the type that has the uh, qualifiers, and here's the type that I want to create. Forward-like forward like works exactly like that, except the second parameter is omitted. I mean, it's deduced. Yeah, I, what I'm saying, I, I want a version where I can actually say deduced. And you can. You can explicitly provide the type, but you don't have to. Because the qualifiers are taken from the first explicit parameter that you always have to provide, so the second one is irrelevant for qualifiers. Yeah, but if I. Because <laughs> we're slightly over time. Yeah, we're slightly over time. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, L is there. So it also just gave me a simple idea that would solve my problem was if we said just explicit this is just an extra syntax to give me what I wanted 
Well, there you go. On everything oh, else. yeah, I, well, fine. <laughs> static. <laughs> static <laughs> bit. <laughs> yes, uh, Vittorio. <laughs> Is what? <laughs> yes, but I have like tea, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Odin. I think so, yes. Yes, let's continue this in the pub. All right, thank you very much.